you look at if you look at Hebrew believers, if you look at Jews who but our God shows people, we've been grafted into their tree. We think we're a new tree. We're not a new tree. We've been grafted into the the, the Hebrew tree by faith, by faith in Christ Jesus, but we don't even know anything about Hebrew culture. One of the things about Hebrew culture is they believe in family businesses. They don't believe in making every generation start over. That's why God is known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not just the God of Abraham. And then Isaac had to go find his own way. No, that's not how it works. Like the whole idea of making your children start over from scratch because they're 18 years old is it's Luciferian. It's satanic. I Scripture wanna... says a good man leaves inheritance to his children's children, right? What we have to do is we have to wrap our mindset around what God says about money. And what God says about money and what the church says about money are not the same thing because people say, well, wealth is evil. No, wealth is not evil. Money is not evil. Money, wealth, abundance is inherently good. How do I know that? Because God only blesses people with good things. And the scripture says the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. The first person the scripture tells us was rich was Abraham. But you want to know something even more mind blowing than that? Can I share something with you? Mind blowing? Of course. Yeah. If you're going to understand the Bible, accurately, you have to study it in according to the law of context. Context is what is the passage saying? What are the verses before it saying? What are the verses after it saying? My understanding of a text of scripture has to agree with the verses that come before it, the verses that come after it, and every other verse in scripture. If my understanding of a passage of scripture contradicts any other verse in scripture, then that misunderstanding <laughs> is because I've taken it out of context. The Bible's not contradicting itself. Your misunderstanding of the Bible is contradicting the Bible. So you have to apply the law of context. You have to apply the law of definitions. So in the law of definitions, you have to know the definition of every word in the passage. If you haven't looked up every word in the passage, if you don't know what the words mean, you can't know what the word means. And then the last one is the law of first mention. Now, the law of first mention says, however, something's mentioned the first time in scripture, that's God's original design for that thing. But it goes a step further. In, in Hebrew culture, the rabbis and the scholars teach that the first time, so Hebrew letters have meaning. Every letter in the Hebrew language has a, its own definition, right? Its own meaning. So words are not just spelled, they're built. Like if I say H2O, you know I'm talking about? Water. Water. The guy, I didn't say water. I just told you the components, and you knew it was water. Well, every Hebrew word is built of the components of the letters. So it's spelled, it's sounded out, it's phonetic, it's symbolic, but it's also constructive. It's a constructive language. And so, but the law of first mention states that the first time we find a letter as the root of a word in the Torah, that's the meaning of that letter. That's how deep the law of first mention goes. In other words, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he only has one design for something. He doesn't say, well, I'm, I changed my mind about this and it means something else later. No, if it meant it before, it still means it because he is the Lord, he changes not, right? God is uniform. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is the physical substance? It's like a physical substance that universally, historically, around the globe has always represented wealth. What's that substance? Money. Well, be, even before gold. 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 That's right. So if you take the concept of gold and the law of first mention, like you take first mention, I was wondering how many times is gold mentioned in the book of Genesis? Guess what? Oh, look, and let me do it this way. Gold <laughs> is mentioned in the book of Genesis exactly eight times that's really interesting because every number has significance one is the number of unity two is the number of separation three is the number of god four is the number of the earth there's four directions on the earth four seasons there are four winds of the earth the four corners of the earth it isn't interesting the earth is round but yet we say it has four corners five is the number of grace we have five fingers on our hand with which to give a gift five fingers with which to receive a gift six is the number of man but it's also the number of falsehood seven is the number of completion. There are seven notes in the musical scale. There's seven colors in the rainbow. There's seven days in a week. Eight is the number of the new beginning, not new beginnings, the new beginning, but it's also the number of infinity, abundance, and eternity. In fact, if you take an eight and turn it outside, it is the symbol for infinity. And gold, the substance that represents wealth, is mentioned in the book of Genesis exactly eight times. That's mind blowing. Talk about design, it gets better. God used the adjective good to describe what he made in Genesis 1 exactly seven times. The eighth time, the eighth time God used the adjective good to describe something, he was talking about gold in Genesis chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. He said there's gold in that land, and the gold of that land is good. So I know that money, wealth, abundance, gold is inherently good because the first time God ever mentioned it, he told me it was good.